Hi guys and welcome back to the Blues Focus channel for yet another Opposition View video. Uh, today's an interesting one <laughs> because I am joined by Fred hmm. for a change. Um, as uh, you all know, I've probably mentioned him a couple of times on different pieces I've done for different channels. Shout out to the mighty goal hanger who's with us today. Adam, how are you, mate? I'm all right, mate. Thanks for having me on. And join with us as well. We have a um, fellow member from the Goal Hanger podcast that us three are a part of. If you want to go check that out, chuck a link in the description. Um, Brandon, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, mate. Um, lesser known of the three of us, but you know what? I'll, <laughs> well, I'll come in clutch. It's fine. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Any Goal Hanger fans, they, they all know you. It's all good. They'll all come flocking. <laughs> they will they'll come pouring in fair you have more subs than us so there you go it's all good but um no so today should be an interesting episode it's a massive game tomorrow and i'm sure we're all uh bricking it let's be honest i don't um, really want to watch it <laughs> <laughs> oh that's understandable but uh no i'll just i'll ask you both separately the same questions i ask everybody else usual format and stuff but no, tomorrow is definitely a uh, scary one, and me and Brandon will be watching it together. So uh, that'll be uh, it. Could go one of two ways, anyway. <laughs> some fights, some fists are going to be thrown. Exactly, with a few beers and whatnot. But we shall see. Anyway, Adam, I'll start with you. Um, overall thoughts on Derby season so far? Not very good. <laughs> I mean, what with twenty first, four points off relegation as it stands. You know, we didn't have the best to start to the seasons. Was already in Koku stepping down, really taking over as player manager and now proper manager. We had a bit of a purple patch of form, but right now we're not in good form. I think it's one win in 12 and it doesn't look positive. Yeah, no, I, I did mention that the other day. Um, I think it was on Doron Tours thing about your current run, the one in 12 thing. Um, it's obviously not great and uh, I'm sure Brandon you will also have your view in it so give it to me mate what's your thoughts on Derby season so far yeah I pretty much just share the same outlook as as Adam there it, it's it's been a, re a really weird season because nobody expected this to go on to happen we all we all kind of thought that we'd progress from last season but um, obviously we, we're all aware of the, the financial issues sort of surrounding the club towards the start of the season which meant that we couldn't make uh, the relevant sign is we managed to get your three half over the line. That was pretty much the marquee one, I'd probably say, which hasn't worked out this year. But a foreign player coming over to the league for the first time sometimes it sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. And um, other than that, probably just getting Matt Clark and I know the only two really big incomings in the summer. And it it felt like we were weaker than last season, but never did anybody think that we'd end up in the place that we are. And it's just everyone's hope just feels like it's just draining out by the minute at this point. Um, I wasn't ner I was, wasn't was really that nervous before filming this, but this has actually started to set me off. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not surprised, mate. I, I'm very nervous for tomorrow, especially with me and you being next to each other for the game. Who knows how that'll turn out. Um, but yeah, no, it's um, it's an interesting one. And it's it's sad to see, considering where you guys have been over the last few seasons, but it's certainly a reality a reality check, I suppose. You've been brought down to our level for a change. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the party, lads. Um, We're leaving the party soon for the division it, below. I was going to say, you're leaving it for League One or promotion <laughs> next season. Mm. No, I, I think you'll you'll be fine, but we'll get on to that later anyway. Um, I'll start with you this time, Brandon. Uh, who should we look out for on the pitch uh, against you tomorrow, if anyone? Yeah, it, that, that's the thing, if anybody. Um, it's After after the, the game on the, what was it, Tuesday night against Preston, Rooney even came out and said like he's, he made his feelings felt towards the players, which I feel like we've heard a number of times this season, to be fair. And the only the only players he actually praised were the two centre backs. You know, mistakes aside, we conceded three goals. So if your centre backs are your best players, you know that there's something kind of that's going wrong. And with all the injury issues, I, they're pretty much all of our best players out, which is which is obviously an issue. Jos React's probably not going to be fit. He's be, going to be lucky to make the bench, I think. Um, Gregory's obviously gone out for the season. Ted and Mengi's gone back to Manchester United. Um, Clark's only just come back from an injury. Edmondson's just come back from a hip injury. It's, it, to quite Adam, it's all going wrong at the moment. 
So um, <laughs> in terms of a player to look out for, um, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. No one's really looked that looked that sharp recently. I guess Tom Lawrence the last few games, he's got like what two two goals since he come back from his injury. Um, so I get I guess him, but even then, it's at the minute it doesn't look doesn't feel like there's much connecting between the the front kind of four or five players. So so probably nobody at this at this stage, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I, uh, I already know Adam's answer because I asked him the other day, so uh, this should be a funny one, but I'll let, I'll let you guys hear it from the man himself. And by the way, now you've mentioned that clip, by the way, Brandon, I'm probably going to chuck it in this video now. It's just all going wrong <laughs> right now. You've got to do this iconic clip. It's just all going wrong right now. It's a great clip. I'll show right, it. Um, yeah, Adam, go for it, mate. For me, for me, obviously... I'll be honest right now, I said Tom Lawrence, but now Brandon mentioned the Preston game, even the Blackburn game. Patrick Roberts has been a bit of a surprise package. Oh, sorry, really. yeah. I forgot about Patrick recently. He's, he's put in some good, some decent performances. Mm. He's looked dangerous. He looks like probably the one out of our attacking line that will get uh, the next goal for us because he, his ability to run round plays is one that I've not really seen at Derby for a long time, if ever. The way he can... The footwork he's got is brilliant and yeah, you, you can you really get, get around the, players. You sort of get the vibes of like a, an old Jamie Ward from him, don't you? Yeah, no way. it's just that final product we haven't seen. He doesn't seem to want to pull the trigger, but for me, it has to be Tom Lawrence. I said this to Tom before the game. I back Tom Lawrence. He's got one of the qualities that I don't see any other championship player having. That's a big statement from me, but Tom <laughs> Lawrence, he turns up like one game in every 10, but he's got that quality to win a game on his own. He's got that ability to hit a shot from 30 yards and it find the top corner. I mean, I forgot who we saw it against, but he, I think it was Reading. Reading. Maybe, yeah, Reading. Reading. He did that there. And he's got the ability, and I hope he can pull it out of the bag tomorrow, but we just don't know with Tom Lawrence. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> um, it wouldn't surprise me if it was against Blues, to be honest. We are prone to long shots, I won't lie. Uh, but I suppose let's let's touch on better time, shall we? Let's cheer you both up a bit. Um, Adam, I'll start with you. What's your favourite memory on playing Birmingham? I was thinking about this yesterday, the other day. I was I was trying to think of one because we've always had some decent games coming up against each other, some decent scoring games. I would probably say my favourite memories of playing you lot would be the 3-0 we had at your place a few years back, I think maybe 2017 or early 2018. I think it was Russell who scored in the first half and Vidra and Wyman in the second half. It, it was just a good game, but another one that sticks out for me is when we had Gary Rao up for the first season who was with us and we won 2-1 at your place. I think Ince scored the last-minute winner. I thought, I thought that was a good game then. I think maybe Shea Adams scored for you lot as well. Borfield open the scoring for us, but that was a good game. There, just two games that stick out for me. Yeah, I remember that game. I remember Adams putting us one nil up, uh, prodding in a pretty scrappy goal from a few yards out, but goals a goal. Uh, then we went on to bottle it as we do. Um, but yeah, no, that tends to unfortunately be the case when we, we play you lot. We look like we're about to win and then we bottle it. I mean, last season when we played you away is a perfect example of that. Turn around a two nil deficit, get a pen. Mr. Penn, lose three two, sick. Um, but no, I loved I loved that away day. That was a great away day last season. Uh, that would definitely be up. To there. be fair to that, to be fair in that penalty, Cal Roos did make a great save. It was yeah. a good save. Like, I mean, you guys have always said it though, Cal Roos, If there's if there's one thing he's good at, it's just general shot stopping. Shot yeah. stopping, he's unreal. To be fair to him, I, th- I think I think honestly, when it goes to number twos in the league, Cal Roos is one of the underrated number twos. Mm. I've got to say. He, no, you can say he's got a mistake in him, but every keeper's got a mistake in him. I think we've seen Marshall have quite a few blunders this season yeah. as well. That that one against um, Barnsley sticks out. Um, but, but yeah, K- Kel Ruth made a good save on that day and um, <laughs> arguably arguably won us the game, actually, because that momentum kind of took us through to get the, mm. get the winner. It did, yeah. And hopefully uh, Marshall makes a few more blunders tomorrow if he's in net. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. So, Brandon, favourite memory on playing Birmingham? Um, yeah, I think I think Adam made a good reference to the uh, the two one at your place a few years back under under that, uh, with that Tom Ince late when I was there. Um, I think I might have actually missed the first goal. You know, um, I can't remember, but um, yeah, we definitely didn't deserve anything from that game. Actually, I remember as well. To be honest, um, I think it was one of those. I think we just kind of tried to sit on the one nil, but. Um, 
But yeah, the, the, we've, we've had some good times against Birmingham in recent years, to be fair. We, we, I remember a 4 0 at your place as well. Um, the 3 1 at, at our place under Frank Lampard, that's another good one. Um, yeah, there's been, there's been, there's always a good game between us mm. as well. And it's two good, good sets of supporters colliding as well. So it makes for a good atmosphere. Obviously, that's not going to be the case to this one, as, as was the last one. But, uh, but yeah, those stick out for me. And I'm going to have to agree with Adam with the, the two one at your place with the Tom Ince winner. I think that was a bit, that was a bit, that was a limbs moment, put it that way. Yeah, definitely. I can imagine, unfortunately. I do remember that one being quite sad just because it was Rowett. Um, but I, I honestly wasn't that surprised. It was classic blues. Um, but I, you never know, there might be some fans tomorrow. They just won't be in the stadium from what I'm hearing, but I'll, I'll say no more on that topic. Um, oh. But who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, Brandon, back to you again, mate. Where do you think you'll finish this season in the league? I hate to ask you the, the big question, but it, it has to be asked. Yeah, because because it, us three talk about this all the time and it's it's hard to give a definitive answer because obviously deep down you kind of just there's something there not knowing that we're gonna stay up. But um you know, you start thinking with your head and you just think, like Adam said earlier, one one in twelve. And some of those performances have been dreadful. Like, and I mean, that Preston one is arguably one of the worst ones. Mm. And to say that we're... Some people make good points on Twitter and stuff about how we're, we're a team that's fighting to stay in the division and that, that performance against Preston didn't reflect the team that's fighting to stay in the division. It didn't seem like that at all. I think... Uh, maybe kind of weighed on the players' heads the fact that they've just been... The last kind of three games, I'd say we've been the better team and we've uh, against good side as well, by the way, Norwich regard. And we've come away with nothing and it's and it's hurt because we felt like we deserved more. But that Preston game was unacceptable. And obviously Rooney's come out since and he's kind of addressed addressed um that you know that he said that he wasn't happy with the players and he's made it well known. But I feel like we've we've heard this a number of times this season and um Look, look, it's easy to say in Rooney's uh, press conferences that um, you'll see a reaction in the next game because off the back of those games, they're games that we arguably deserve to win. So for him to then come out and say that after a game like the Preston game doesn't fill people with much hope, but that is the game that you'd return from or come back from, sorry, against Birmingham and you actually have got something to prove because coming off the last performance, we didn't deserve anything. So the players do actually need to put in a shift for this one. And it's going to be a hard fall game. It's not going to be all ticky tack. It won't be anything like the game that St Andrews are going to see them. So it's it's going to be a really interesting, interesting watch. And for for a final place, it's hard to give you. I'm going to obviously say 21st. I'm going to pray that we're going to stay up, but I am marginally leaning towards the bottom three, unfortunately. So, Adam, are you um, are you agreeing with are you agreeing with Brandon, or are you going a different direction? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, there we go. Unfortunately, I I don't know. Like in my head, I'm going Rotherham can't seem to win. Touch wood, they can't seem to win. Obviously, coming off the back of that Borough loss when they went one 0 up, but. They're playing better than us, and with three—is it three games in hand over us, or two games in hand? It's in it's their two court. Two in a minute, I think. Isn't it? mm-hmm. It's in their court, and, and unfortunately, our season's relying on Rotherham, which shows we haven't had a good season. And I will say twenty-first, but with Chef Wednesday only four points behind us, and obviously playing them last game of the season, we could easily slip to twenty-second. It's possible, or even twenty-third. We could still finish below working, mate. We can yeah. still finish below working. <laughs> That's what worries it's me. It's, it's going to be very tight, obviously. Like all, you know, the fact opinion. we can have to win all of the games, but it's it's still mathematically possible that we can finish bottom. They're all playing better than us, in my opinion, at the moment, and it, it, it it's coming down to the final day against Sheffield Wednesday. We all know it, so I'll say twenty first. But if we went down, I wouldn't be shocked because it's been coming this season. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. Um, I think from from my point of view, I think on paper out of the uh, the kind of the bottom four right now, I'd say you have the best squad. Um, 
Sheffield Wednesday actually have a decent squad in fairness. Yeah, they do. Um, and realistically, you know, you take off the six points and they're above you. Like, yeah. it's, it's that simple. And that, that just shows the fine margins. Yeah. We're, lucky, we're lucky that we're not in that bottom three at the minute. Precisely, you know, because if Sheffield Wednesday don't have a points deduction, you are in the bottom three. So I... we we could have we could have had a points deduction, mate. Yeah. On another true. on another, obviously, we, we spoke to Kieran about that and kind of addressed that whole issue. But um, that that could have quite easily been us, and we'd be in a worse position than we even are now, which is not great to be honest. I mean, you say we have a good squad. Let me just bring back the playoff 13 14. We've got a great squad. <laughs> Didn't go up. Didn't go up. We're, we're still living on that one, unfortunately. I'm not, I'm not in pain about that one. Nah. I, I can see the pain on your face. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's tough. I do think your ledge staying up because it wouldn't surprise me if you beat us tomorrow. But I just think, you know, realistically on paper right now, you are a bottom three squad. It's where you should be. But you are fortunate True. with the points deduction stuff. So you just got to make the most of that. And realistically, I think Curtis Davis made a good point the other day. I actually think there's more pressure on Rotherham right now um, than there is on yeah, you. Every, I think everybody, in my opinion, believes in Rotherham more than they do believe in Derby. Derby mm, like that, that's, on yeah, the pitch that's where I, the pitch. That's probably where I disagree to an extent with Curtis there because, yeah, Rotherham, at the end of the day, all the team, they have got the game in hand, but they've got, they're in a position where they can put it right when not. If we, we could win all of our remaining games and still not stay up, that, that'll happen, obviously. Which but is a scary prospect as well when you think about it. It is. So I actually feel like the pressure is on us. And Rotherham have kind of just... Look, Rotherham have come into this side. They've come up from League One and they are... They, they were favourites to go to, honestly, get, get relegated as they are pretty much every time they come up, really. But um, I feel like the pressure's on us, and I feel like it might be might be hitting some of the players. I'm not not quite sure, but as a fan, I definitely f- feel more pressure than probably some Rotherham supporters do. Yeah, I think that's fair because you know you you look at it in a way they play their game in hands very very late on in the season, especially that game against Luton. By mm. then, they will already probably know what they need, and. If, if they go into that game playing against a team like Luton who have nothing to play for whatsoever, that, that is scary. So you do need to start picking up points. You need to start picking them up now, particularly that Sheffield Wednesday game. I think that is probably going to be such a big game. Come it's a squad as well, by the way, that Rotherham squad, which didn't expect to stay up, really. Well, they would have had, obviously, prospects to stay in the division, but the, the squad's weak on paper was weaker than... 21 of the other, the others in the league, you know what I mean? So they, they might feel somewhat privileged or lucky to be in the position that they're in now, where a, a squad like Derby, who didn't expect to be in this position, find themselves in that position. And now all of a sudden, there's a genuine possibility of it happening. And Rotherham will smell blood. And like you said, with the with their stylist players, well, they, they press hard, they, they, they fight for it. And that's the fight that I don't see in us at the minute. Which is what no, is worrying me. Exactly, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, lads. Any Blues fan who watched that Rotherham game when we played them uh, on the Sunday, even neutrals, everyone would say Rotherham deserved to beat us that day. They turned us over. They, 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 they us were better side. They, they, in all honesty, they were a better side than us uh, on the day, but we had more quality and we were just more clinical, and we got the crucial three points. We did you a favour there. Um, but we could have easily lost that game. I thought Rotherham were really, really good. They're, considering they just played two games in five days before that, I was really impressed with the commitment they had. So if they play like that till the end of the season, then it is worrying for you. It is, it's, but Sheffield Wednesday are creeping as well, and Wickham want to pull off a miracle. So I, I do think it's all going to go down to the last day, I won't lie. And it's going to be a squeaky bum time for somebody. We've not got it in us to pull off a last day thing. It's not in that squad. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I mean, the majority of bench is youth academy at the moment. I think in, in one of the last games, I remember saying we had out of the I think it's like eight academy eight, eight players you could put on the bench, something like that. We had like six academy players, which yeah. which isn't great. I think that speaks for itself on the whole squad depth and injuries and yeah. whatnot. Um, so that that will that will play a part. But Rotherham have a thin squad themselves. 
So um, we shall see. We shall see. I um, suppose it's just taking the conversation a bit more back to blues um, in a sense. Uh, where do you, uh, what, what are your thoughts on Birmingham guys? I'll, I'll start with you, Adam. What are your thoughts on Birmingham this season? What do you mean? Oh, this season, this season. Um, I made a prediction video and I probably look a bit of a fool now because I think I said Birmingham to finish like sixth or, or fifth. Yeah, you did. Because I like Ita Karanka as a manager and I like the plays that you got. I think it was, is it George Friend? that I really like him as a defender. Um, been really good for Middlesbrough in recent years. So I predicted you to have a decent finish with some of the players that you already have and the players that you signed. It just didn't work out, unfortunately, under Ita Karanka, which I was a bit shocked at. So I do think this season's been a bit of a disappointment if I was a Birmingham City fan, obviously I'm not. But then again, Lee Bowie's come in and it's a good appointment. It seems obviously he's getting you playing a lot better football than what you were. You're picking up points, especially against some of the top six. So I think you've got a decent future under Bowie if you can get the back in, um, get some more players. And you've got definitely got a decent squad there already. Some of the quality that you have, it's just whether you can find it in the players. So I think it's been a bit of a disappointing season for Birmingham City, but as long as you stay up, I think, I think you're fine with that. Exactly, bang on, mate. And John, you know it's it's funny you mentioned obviously like what we can build on in the future. Um, I uh, I don't want to get too excited. I do love the way we're playing right now, but I don't want to get too excited at all because uh, if Derby are a prime example, uh, last season from January onwards towards the end of the season, I think you went like twelve games unbeaten, or you went on this match. Yeah, we were quality. We were yeah, quality you were just good form the Philip. Yeah, big man Kaku, and it just all went down the toilet at the start of the next season. So um, I'm sure Brandon will love to touch on that. He does love Phil. Um, I love Phil as well. <laughs> so there, there you go. Um, but no, so Brandon, uh, what are your thoughts on Birmingham this, this season? Um, yeah, kind of just echoing what Adam's saying. Really, I, I, I didn't make a reaction video, obviously, but. Um, at the start of the season, I would have had them higher than you know past seasons or whatever. I, ne- I wouldn't have thought they'd have got playoffs at the first go. I think that would have been a bit of a push. Um, but a, a two or three transfer windows down the line, I wouldn't have thought why they wouldn't have been able to challenge that, especially with our manager that's took Middlesbrough up um, and done well there as well while they were in the Prem still and to spark them at them. Um, but yeah, d- disappointed to an extent. You made good signings. I was impressed by the by the business that you did. Um, but yeah, it, it was weird, especially speaking to you about them at times as well after after certain games where you showed anger towards Ita Kranker and it's just something that I didn't expect to happen with, with obviously what, what he's done in the past with Borough. So it's it, it, it shocked me and obviously the spud is an improvement as well. So yeah, so like Adam says, dis- disappointing if I was a Blues fan, but like you said, now you're under Boyer, you you clearly like the way that you're playing. Um, and if you see that there's something to get excited about and that, that there's potential, then that is what it is. This season, this season, I think you're safe now. So I think you can start, when, not start to think, but at least have sort of one eye on what might be the future. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm certainly excited, especially when Boyer can bring his own players in. I think that's what excites me the most. Because if we can build on what we're doing now, we're just matching teams. That's how we're winning games. We match teams and we look to make them feel uncomfortable. And we're just winning games, you know, Uh, high energy uh, at the right time. And we've been clinical when we've needed to be. Um, We deserve to beat Forest the other day. We were unlucky not to. Um, we were far better. This we were much better side than they were. To be honest, Forest were actually one of the worst sides I've seen us play this season, including teams that we've beaten. I thought they were worse than Rotherham. Um, but Chris Hewton sides can be like that. They can they can win or draw ugly. Um, and although you can come away from the game frustrated, that's just the way they like to play. Um, and I think that's what Derby need right now. They need that kind of make games ugly, fight for everything, fight for every loose ball and just get something out of the game. Um, so that would definitely be something that I I think you need to see more of. And uh, hopefully you see a response tomorrow on your part, but I also hope you don't see a response tomorrow. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. So, guys... I'd, I'd, argue, I'd argue the same point that you've just made, to be fair. The fact that we we need to fight for the results, you know, show some grit, show some... We're not going to leave that team. 
We've not got a leader. Yeah, this is this is kind of what, where I'm going with it. It doesn't feel like we've got the players to be able to do that. We've got some technical players that aren't performing, and it's not it's not you your sort of side that's you know like an engine, a hard working side that's gonna you know bully uh, set pieces, blah blah blah. But then that's kind of where the the lack of confidence comes from, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I think I think you're bang on. Right. I feel like we could talk about this for ages, just because it's. I mean, we do it on the Golden like Podcast. You, you've seen how long they go on for, lads. So uh, <laughs> there's always there's always plenty to say. Um, I'm sure we'll chat more after uh, after this episode once it's all been wrapped up. But uh, now, before we uh, we before we wrap up the episode and stuff, boys, I need your score predictions. Um, I'll I'll kick things off. Do we have to. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I hate be I hate being positive against teams I really want to beat. Because whenever I am, we lose. Um, I I've just got this feeling it's going to be a draw tomorrow. I do think we're going to play really well, but I just think you're going to make it. You're going to make it tough for us. I think you'll be surprised by the way you play. Just knowing Blues' luck, I I'd, I'd be more lenient to a two-one Blues, but I am going to say two-two. So um, who wants to go first? Go on, boys. Offer yourself up. Brandon? Neither of you. <laughs> um, right, what's that? What's that? I've got it now. Um, like you say, that it's just in the position that we're in now. It's just a prediction that you just can't make. So it's you want you want to see you want to hope that there's going to be a performance in there, but I just don't think there is. Like you say, you're out there matching some of the best teams in the division, and it's not what we've been doing. Well, we we've been playing well, but not like. Nice. They're not matching teams in the bigger games. So I feel I don't want to be negative, but I'm just going to go with a 1 0 to Birmingham and just hope that I'm wrong. Fair play. Love the honesty. Adam, over to you. Um, well, Preston don't score three and they put three past us. So um, I'll say a 1 1 Patrick Roberts to get his first goal, but I'm clutching at straws there from being honest. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll say a one-one, and that's me being very positive right now. I was gonna say I love the positivity, but I have heard good things about Patrick Roberts, so uh, it wouldn't surprise me if tomorrow's the day he decides to turn up. To be honest, because it's Blues, but we shall see, boys. We shall see. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you both on, anyway. So thank you for joining us, and uh, no worries. Thanks for having me on. Uh, guys, uh, I'll leave all the uh, dis- links and stuff in the description. Link to the Patreon page. Um, Brandon doesn't have a YouTube channel, so I'm going to drop his Twitter down there. Go give him a follow. Um, Adam, go check out Goalanger YouTube channel. Boost that number over 200. <laughs> what did you say? I said boost that number over 200. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, just... I could do with 400 on Twist. <laughs> <laughs> No, just get get him over there. Get get checking out the socials. Get checking out the YouTube channel, and whatnot. And if you're feeling a bit bored, go check out our uh, Golanger podcast. There's, there might be one coming out very soon that you can enjoy. Um, so definitely go go check that out for us, guys. Um, but thank you for joining us as always. And um, let's hope Blues can get a win, shall we? Keep right on and see you in the next one.